Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, as you can see, this time looking at a Commodore 64C. Um, something, a friend of mine sent this to me. Picked it up off eBay. Um, I paid him for it. I think he paid. He bought it for 16 quid and he just shipped it to me for nothing. Um, you can see someone's removed um, the modulator here. Can you see how mangled it is? You know, the connections to the actual modulator itself are mangled, and the board pads there are mangled. More evident if you look here. Look at the state of that, got ripped traces and things, pads missing. You can see there's a trace just hanging here, there, that's come off somewhere around there. Large blobs of solder, some marked damage tracks here. But um, yeah, and you could actually jump to conclusions and think that that's props where the fault is and that's all that's wrong with it. But I've got my suspicions, I think maybe that there was a problem with this. Look how's that got solder got there, can you see that there? It's things like that, I just never noticed you've got a I'm gonna have a good inspection um, of this, but as I scroll around here, you know, there should be something else that stands out like a sore thumb um, in the middle of the shot there. Have a look at the crystal. Let's see what's going on here. It's um, it's been bent forward, and um, the the connection on this side of the crystal is short to the cam, so there wouldn't even be a clock. There's no clock on this system. That's that's if there's anything wrong with it, that's why it's going to be. If that was perhaps the original fault, I don't know. Um, but I think someone's decided to try and remove the modular for uh, why I'm not quite entirely sure. Maybe improve the video output. Maybe they thought that the modular might be the fault. Um, honestly, I don't know. But I mean, I could probably get that modular back on there. Um, I'm not sure if the C64 needs the modular in order to, you know, put composite. Um, I'm not sure. I've got an S video cable I made up recently. I might just I'll clean this up, you know, clean all these up, make sure there's no shorts, because I think there are one or two places where it's almost short, and certainly here, uh, you can see where's it gone. Um, there, that pad there, just because the way it's been removed, it's, it's pretty much short to the, the ground nearby. So I need to clean it up um, with some um, the solder uh, braid. What the hell's going on there? I'm just looking at these diode, the two diodes there. Don't you can see someone's been tinkering with the diodes there as well. Quite large blobs of solder, so I'm not sure what's gone on there. Maybe it had a prior, prior fault. Someone to fix that. I don't know. Um, yeah, interested to see what state this is in when I've powered it up. But before I do anything like that, I'll just clean up clean up with some uh, disolderware and some flux, clean up all these traces, move that crystal to make sure the crystal's making, um, it's not shorting. Um, and then I'll probably just put this on, on some anti-static foam and uh, connect it up with the S-Video lead. Well, it's very interesting this. I'll just show you on the meter. If I switch this thing on, uh, just measure the VCC. Less than a volt. And you can see it rising. After you leave it on for a few seconds, you can start to smell something heating up. I've narrowed it down to that, that, there, L2. That is getting hot. Now, I've looked at the schematics, that provides the 5 volts to the modulator. So, we must have a short somewhere. Um, it could be the cap, there's a cap next to it, C240, that's not hot. Um, I mean, the fact that that's getting warm makes me think the short is going to be there, you know, so we've got a short from ground to VCC. Somewhere. Um, Somewhere on there, you can see clean this up a little bit, it's as good as it's going to get for the moment. Um, that's where L2 comes out. It's not short into anything. Unless it's short to that somehow nearby, it looks like it's not. Um, very odd. But I mean, you know, as you can see, it powered this up without a SID and a VIC in, and I'm still getting no voltage, and it is L2 that's getting red hot. Well, that just connects from the VIC to the uh, modulator there. So, there's nothing else in between. Very odd. Um, I'll inspect. Um, yeah, I'll inspect the board a little bit more thoroughly, thoroughly around here where L2 comes out and see if I can find anything. Well, this is very odd. As you can see, I've, just, I've lifted one side of L2. It's powering up. Um, obviously, there's no picture because um, I think there's a reliance on the uh, the modular being there. So, very odd. I did look at the schematics, as I say, L2 just feeds 5 volts to the modulator. Well, I can't see any short there in relationship to L2. So, I don't know, I'm just totally missing something there somewhere. Um, maybe it's the pad that comes up on this side, maybe it's not supposed to be joined there, I don't know, it's hard to tell whether there's 
um, excess solder there or not, I'll show you. Um, because it's such a mess around that area. You see here, previously, it was um, shorted a little bit and I set, isolated that. But then can you see here? Is that all supposed to be part of the same trace there? I'm not sure, maybe that's what that is. Maybe L2 goes there and then it's somehow it's connected to one of those two. I'll do some more connectivity tests. Um, I think I'll strip the modulator down. I'll, I'll see if I can fix the modulator. Um, there's a lot of broken tracks, so yeah, it's not gonna be easy, it's gonna be five or six or seven wires at least, I think, somewhere. Yeah, so at least that's proven that the backbone of the system's okay. You know, you've got like the CPU must be working, the RAM must be working, PLA must be working to a degree. Um, Vic we're not sure about, um, and the SID is definitely working. So, yeah. But I mean, uh, it's a bit weird. You can see there's extra solder that's been, you know, I've removed the solder from there. There was solder on the cart pins, there was solder on here. I don't really know how this has got into the state it's got. I really don't. Um, it's very mysterious. You know, but coming back to that inductor, I don't see what, you know, it can't be the inductor itself because it, it is a short by the nature of what it is. That's the component it is. It's a coil. Um, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, you know, it's just a piece of wire effectively. So that is going to measure as a short. So it must be, it must be here. There must be a short here, but quite why someone's done this, um, I don't know, it's beyond me. It's another one of these mysterious ones really. Anyway, I'll report back in a minute when I've uh, made some progress here. Yeah, it was that pad there, can you see? Hopefully now. Um, just with a bit of solder braid, there's like an extra pad came off, one of the other pads from somewhere else probably. So that was the short. It also explains when, when I first powered this up, I wasn't getting the LED coming on um, at all. Um, and that was when I then measured the voltage and realised it was less than a volt. So, strange, you know, a series of events here. Someone's obviously removed this for some reason, maybe to get better uh, output. Maybe they're trying to do some sort of mod there to get rid of the lines um, that you sometimes get on uh, on these, you know, the jail bars. And they just made a hash of it, really, removing the modulator. So, I will strip the modulator down, show you the board, and we'll have a look to see what's going to be required there to to be able to get the modulator back on here. Luckily there are no real pads or anything on the top side here that I'm too concerned about other than perhaps making sure we get a good connection to that which I think is the plus five and uh, over there as well. Um, but there's nothing else really on, that, on the top side is the point I'm trying to make. No traces go anywhere. It's all on the underside of the board so um, I'll just give you a quick look actually if I just disconnect this and show you the underside. Um, I'll need to zoom in a little bit. So you can see the damage um, here, which I've cleaned up a little bit. You know, the pads are all completely gone. Um, the solder's nice and level now, nice and smooth. You can see what's, you know, what's what's going where. But there is going to be obviously some traces, as you can see here, that are broken off and stuff that I'm going to need to stick wire links to as I want to stick the modulator back on. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. As long as I get a connection to that power, so you know, soaking through the solder needs to soak through to get to that that first pin there, which is that one there so yeah it could be tricky to get the solder to flow there um yeah it's going to be an interesting one but hopefully if i can get that right I should be able to get the modulator back on um, and hopefully it should work so you can see you know in order, it's been mangled this uh, i don't know how someone's got solder on that corner point there so you can't even get inside the damn thing so i need to get some heat so i'm getting my weller uh, desoldering station um, onto this uh, set to 400 degrees at the moment, just wait for it to heat up and then I can get rid of this solder off here, move the top part of the can, um, heat this corner up here so then that hopefully the bottom bottom part should then come off because it's that solder there and you can see it's been bent and warped and I'll, I'll straighten this all up, uh, the two pieces of shield in there, but I'll be able to access um, here, um, remove those floating pins, um, there's loads of pads missing there, I don't know if you can see that, it's not coming out very well. You'll be able to see better once I've got the shielding off. But I'm going to have to have some wires inside, then I'm going to have to have pins, you know, eight lots of pins, two lots of four pins coming through here that protrude sufficient enough to go through the board. Um, so it's going to be pretty tricky to do that. Um, I'm not sure the best approach. Um, in terms of the wires, I'm going to have to wire wrap around the pins that come out just to make sure they want to heat up uh, to solder onto the C64 side they don't become disconnected from the modular. The other thing I'm going to look at in here while I'm there as well is any caps. If there's any caps in there I'm going to swap them out because ultimately that might be why this was taken off. Maybe there's something wrong with this modular. Maybe it's not very good. Um, 
by the way, the soldier station is almost heated up now, so I'll just get these bits of shielding off. So you can see I've got the shielding off there on both sides. Um, there's no solder contacts on this side, that's okay. That, you know, components go top side, there's only solder pads on this side. Um, you can see I've cleaned this up a little bit here. I've just used a bit of flux solder braid. We've got a damage pad there. Um, in fact, all three of those are damaged, but there are, you know, you can see remnants of them connected to where they need to be. So I actually don't need to do really anything on that side other than make sure I've got my, you know, my four connectors, uh, four, you know, pins through there, uh, with sufficient distance to travel through the PCB. And on this side, it's a whole different story. All four pads are missing, but if we look at that first one there, it looks like it's supposed to join here. That's where it looks like it's lifted off. So I can um, attach a wire. And just wire wrap uh, around the pin once I've connected the pin on there. Um, the second one connects to this here, which is quite convenient. I could just um, trail the solder across. It looks like it's a, you know, a ground point. And I think I'll do the same on the other side. I'll perhaps just put a tiny bit of solder up here and just attach the, the pin as it comes through on that side, just to make sure it's a, it remains connected. Um, and then the third one comes to this trace here, so it's going to be another little wire and wrapped around the pin. Um, and the final one comes across to this cap. Here. So same thing, a little wire uh, wrapped around. So uh, I need to go and find some connectors now. I'm thinking about using some of those little um, inline uh, pin header or something along those lines. I need to see if I've got anything that's going to be the right, you know, it's going to fit um, with the right length. Um, but that's what I'm thinking of using. Other than that, it's just going to be, you know, cut some legs, uh, legs off some resistors, you know, and use those. But I don't really want to use those because they're going to wobble around and stuff. I could use. Um, pin header things I might even be able to stick the, leave the plastic part on this side to keep them totally in a straight alignment um, we'll see what I can come up with right well I've checked the caps and things on here and they're okay and as you can see I've got the, uh, the replacement legs um, they're just you know they're not perfectly straight um, but they are on this side here you know they're, they're not too bad they're just the spacing might just not be quite right I just need to just bend the tiny little bit to get them through the PCB but hopefully they're protruding enough here they're in, almost in line with that shielding tab so I think they'll be okay um, and there's just one that I can't join up and that's the one that connects to the shielding here um, I'm not too worried about that because it's just the shielding um, so as long as the shielding's making a connection it's actually not required that third pin um, so I think what I'll do now is just straighten this up a bit you can see it's been bent and stuff and someone's melted the switch a little bit there um, I might have to adjust these pots um, I'm not sure yet but yeah I'll get the players into this straighten this up straighten up the um, shielding part of the you know the lid and stuff and uh, reassemble um, you know fit this back on the board and see what happens I think so here's the update as far as this video goes. As you can see, I've modulated it back on there now. Um, <coughs> I've soldered it back on completely. Um, I changed my approach there. Um, I started using the little wires that went straight through, you know, the, the little pin headers there that I showed. And that worked okay, but when I came to test my S-Video cable, um, I had no luminance signal. Um, so I think one of the little wires had come detached inside. So I thought actually a better approach was to remove the pin head, you know, the little pin headers I'd used, and just use wires. So, you know, I soldered eight wires there really, you know, so they're quite long about that length um, from the underneath of the modulator, eight of them, and then fed them through the holes in the board, as you can see, and then attached them to the destination. So you're not resoldering additional wires and things, because that's the problem with those pins. Once you've got all eight pins sort of through the board here and you start to solder them, inside the modulator there, it's very easy if, you know, for the wires to just float off or flick off, you know, from the, the joints inside. Whereas with this, you know, the, the, you've got an extra length of distance there for the uh, heat to travel so it's not lightly um, they'll, they'll come detached so yeah it's not too bad it's still a mess you know but you know what you're going to do um, but I'll show you this working now I mean it's, it is working fine um, I'll show you with the S video it doesn't give a particularly clean S video pic picture if I'm completely honest but uh, yeah it's better than nothing that's for sure um, the composite's actually better than the S video on this particular one um, you can see there's a little bit of ghosting um, but there is, you can get a mod for this, I've got one somewhere, um, which I'll cover in another video. I might have a go at doing it on this one actually to see um, how it looks. But we'll just try that with composite cable now, hang on. And that's with a composite cable, so a lot cleaner, but you can see the little lines there, um, you know, the more noticeable. It's interesting how it's got better composite than S video, the 64C, so not sure why. I mean, I did check the caps and things in the modulator, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, 
it gives a really sharp um, composite image. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.